Hey guys and welcome back to the garden. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Blanca. So today's video, like you read in the thumbnail below, I am finally able to treat for thrips. It is not cold anymore. It is not raining and I am going to get it done. I'm still a little bit early in the morning. So hopefully if you're watching this, I will be motivating you to do the same. <laughs> uh, so before I get over to my orchid section, which, which is where I'm gonna treat, I am going to uh, just show you really quick some pretty flowers. And this rooster is awake. Uh, so I wanted to come over here and show you these beautiful cat layers in bloom, you guys. I got three in total and I have gloves on because I'm gonna get ready to treat. So that's why you're <laughs> seeing this. Um, beautiful cat layers. I had no idea that these were gonna do so well. Mountain on this Rubellini tree. Aren't they just the most gorgeous, gorgeous Catleas? They're petite. Uh, look at this size. Just so you can get, the, get this as a reference. Um, they're petite and they are fragrant. And they've attached and adapted so well um, to living under here. So I have her attached to this Rubellini tree. And they've been blooming. I mean, over here I had a few blooms also. So just wanted to uh, follow up on this. I'm so happy that they are here and they're happy. And because they're getting so much shade under here, they don't get as damaged as my other Catleas in the garden. So I wanted to show you some pretty flowers before I move on with this video. So beautiful. All right, you guys, so my hose is on and let's get this done. Um, so I'm, I am going to treat the Vanda over here, um, but I might not do it on camera because I have everything under the orchid section and I don't want to make this video too, too long. So this Vanda here has been um, affected by thrips. You can tell by the, you can tell by her, by her petals. She's not in the healthiest condition. Um, so what happens is that these microscopic, if you're not um, familiar with what thrips are, I have never seen them. I've only seen them when I've Googled them because they are so tiny, they are microscopic, and I, I really have never seen them. Nor have I really searched too much because I don't like bugs, so I haven't really um, dug inside my orchid. So maybe they are visible, I have never seen them, and from what I've read, another beautiful bloom, and from what I've read, they are very, you know, they're microscopic. So the reason I know that I have thrips is, and I have all of my supplies down here. The reason I know I have thrips is because when a flower spike starts to develop and starts to grow, you will notice that the flower spike gets very brown, kind of crispy. And in the past, I've thought it was maybe like sunburn or, you know, just the weather out here, but no, it's definitely thrips. It happens every so often. Not sure if there's, um, like I mentioned um, a few videos ago, not sure if there's a time in the year where these thrips are more present, but um, I do know from you guys, um, from your comments and from speaking to, um, to subscribers and all that, that thrips in January is very common. So we are gonna be treating for these today. So see how the brown on the tip and the browning on the actual flower spike? Uh, that's an indication that you have thrips in the garden. When you discover that, you might wanna look around and see if other um, orchids are affected by, the, by, the, by, by thrips. And that way you know, um, you know, if you have like a, like a large infestation or maybe it's just on one plant and maybe you wanna take it away from, from the others. Uh, in my case, I've already seen it on three, so I'm gonna treat everything today for thrips. Um, now, I, do no, I don't have any flowers out here because I recently moved them. Um, it was, uh, we got a really bad storm. I didn't wanna lose the flowers and they're under my, my, my terrace. And that's good because when I treat or when I fertilize, I don't like the flowers to get hit with that stuff because they will make them last um, less. At least that's what I've been told, so I don't want to. I don't want to to risk that. See, this one also seems like it's it's been affected. Just the browning, the browning on the on the flower spike, 
um, is, a, is, a, is a huge indication. And then eventually that flower spike is gonna all dry up and fall. Um, you guys have asked if there's any way that thrips, um, that an affected spike can be brought back. I've never had it whenever, um, I know it's bad news. Whenever a thrips affects the flower spike, I usually lose that flower spike. And if it manages to pull out a flower, the flower is gonna be so burnt like you saw in the in the vanda in the front it's going to be so burnt that it's not even a pretty flower so it's it's done once thrips once the rips affects the orchid um pretty much that bloom is 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 done okay so before i get started <laughs> another interruption i i i was able to get this one id'd you with your help uh this one's called the golden digger I think it's like a Golden Digger 67. So this Catlea got a lot of attention from yesterday's video because it is so pretty. It smells like, I want to say it smells a little lemony. It is just absolutely gorgeous. It's really wet right now because of my sprinklers. But it's absolutely beautiful. It smells um, very kind of like citrusy. I don't know if like lemon, but it smells a little citrusy and it's a vibrant yellow. So this one is called the Golden Digger, I believe, 67. Um, it's in my comments um, on yesterday's video. So if I can, if I can uh, pin it, I will. And let's get started with with this. Um, what I'm going to use to to uh, to use to treat for thrips. All right. So in the past. Uh, I've used a lot of orthene. I've used orthene for many, many years, um, and it is a really great pesticide. I mean, it is fantastic, but it's very chalky. It's very toxic. It's very stinky. You can't get that stuff on you. I mean, I wouldn't get any of this stuff on me, um, but it's just a really, really harsh chemical. So um, I'm gonna try something a little bit less harsh. It's not natural, like um, lo lots of people um, commented if I don't, why don't I use neem oil and um, something just natural and I've never tried it so I'm what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try getting like decreasing the amount of toxicity to I don't even know how to say that toxicity <laughs> so I'm gonna be trying products um, as I go on depending um, you know like if this one works really well I'll probably use this for a while and then maybe one day I'll apply like neem oil or something a little bit more natural but we're gonna go in steps uh, so I've uh, kind of moved away from the orthene, even though I absolutely love it. It takes care of the problem. It's systematic. It's very strong. And your the thrips will be gone, I promise, like with the second application. I mean, it's magic. Um, but like I said, it's just so toxic. I have pets. Um, I don't want to get that stuff on me. I don't want to inhale that stuff. So I'm moving on to something a little bit safer. Um, so this is Permatrol. It's a lawn insecticide. It's actually safe. Um, like if you have pets so you can use it on on lawns gardens fruit trees and it's it's not as toxic I mean all the information's in the back and I love that it's already like a like liquefied so the other thing is you have to actually scoop it with a spoon and and dissolve it so it's pretty strong I hope I can get this open with one hand oh I got it all right so you see the liquid in here it's kind of like the Faisan I don't even know what it I mean I'm not gonna smell it but I I, I don't even know um, if it's oh it says it has low odor so that's that's pretty cool so everything I'm gonna be using I'm gonna link it down in the um, in the comments in the uh, description in case you want to get it I got this one at Ofi which is a local orchid supply store but uh, you can get it from Amazon or from your local orchid supply not sure if you can get it like at Home Depot. So uh, Permatrol is what it's called. And I'm going to be mixing one tablespoon of the solution per gallon of water. And what I'm going to be doing is that I am going to be putting, I'm going to be mixing six gallons today. So I'm going to be putting uh, six tablespoons inside of my Chapin insecticide sprayer, which when you fill it up to the top, and you use all of the solution, you're gonna have applied six gallons to your orchids. This does not hold six gallons. I know, I've said it before, but every time I post this video, you guys ask. 
um this holds not even probably like a quart or a pint so uh you fill it up to the gallon line so if you're gonna do one two three four five you fill it up to here with water once you mix it in with the hose and then since i'm gonna do six i'm gonna put it like right above like around here okay and then you want to wear long sleeves you want to wear gloves you want to cover your face if you have any of the oh well, everybody has face masks nowadays but you want to cover your face uh so you don't get any of this stuff on you even though it's not like the most toxic solution all right so this i'm going to have to put you guys down for just a minute so i can actually put my um this is a teaspoon so i'm going to fill this one twice and put it inside this six times so i will be right back i'm just going to put you guys down because i don't want to pause this video all right so i'll just put you here and you guys can see let me put you like that so you can see some roots just really quick let me just get this stuff in here um so i'm gonna do all right so i'm just putting all of the all of the permatrol i've already put six tablespoons i'm gonna cover it up all right all right so i've already mixed in six tablespoons of the permatrol in here and then i'm carefully gonna add mm. all right so this stuff smells like gasoline that's what this smells like it smells like gasoline it smells just like gasoline all right this is weird it's the first time i'm using it you guys so let's see i'm gonna just uh very slowly pour in the water it comes out with force so i'm just gonna yeah, so if you're wondering what this smells like, it smells just like gasoline. Oof. All right, so to prevent the bubbles, you want to add the mixture to the water. But I don't know why I like to do it this way. I feel like it's getting, it's, it's, it's mixing better when I, when I add the solution <laughs> before and then put the water. But then you get all these bubbles and stuff. So you want to go slowly. You want to go really slowly and just kind of, you know, do it. I mean, if you want to fast forward, just go ahead. I'm just, just doing like a, a step-by-step -step tutorial. This might be boring for some. So while I'm doing this, you guys, before um, I get really deep into the video and you guys probably stop watching, remember this weekend there's an orchid show in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. So if you're in... If you're local and you're in Fort Lauderdale or you're in Miami or you're in Palm Beach or you're you want to travel down, they have a great show. It's called Rock um, Orchids Rock. Oh my gosh, I, I didn't think this had so many bubbles like this. Yikes. Um, it's called Orchid Rocks. Fort Lauderdale does um, they put on a really, really great show. I mean, I've been there for many years and um, last time they had a last time they had a show wow this stuff smells just like pure gasoline Ugh. um so last time that they had a show in 2020 i was a vendor and they they really put up a nice show i think today's our vip night i'm not sure i was gonna go over there you know what i need to i need to i need to tie this up so let me do this also by putting you guys down so i was a vendor when i was a vendor there um their vip if you guys got vip tickets or if anybody's going um and you guys are wondering how the VIP is. The VIP is really fancy. So that's that's nice. And they have like dinner and drinks and you get to shop. But I'm not sure with COVID if they're doing that. But it's, it's, um, my gosh. I can't believe that this smells just like gasoline. So, all right, I'm back. Um, so yeah, so their VIP is really, really fancy. And they put a really good show and there's going to be lots of great vendors there so i'm just washing my hands so if you guys can make it out that's going to be for lauderdale um orchid society show and it starts tomorrow and today i think is our vip all right so it's already mixed in i'm ready you guys this is like pure gasoline i'm putting on my it feels like i'm putting on my orchids so I really want to get the affected orchids. I really just want to 
drench them in this stuff. And I'm gonna put them on the leaves. I'm gonna put them all over the, all over the roots. So really, really treat them. Even the ones that don't have thrips that I haven't seen, like my violettas right here, I'm gonna treat them too. Just as a preventative. Yeah, you definitely want to put on a mask because this stuff smells really gasoline. -y. So I'm going to be doing this throughout and just getting it on everything. So hopefully this one here. And since this is safe for like ornamental plants and fruits and vegetables and all that stuff, I don't mind it getting on my on my arrows back there just really want to treat to get all this thrips out of here so this is how i spray it i mean i'll i'll spend a few seconds on each and just just drench them just make sure that everything gets a good a good dose i mean and like i said if you have if you have any if you have any flowers, you don't want to hit them with the solution. I don't like to hit them with any solution, not with fertilizer, not with insecticide, not with fungicide. So anything in flower, um, I move or I try to avoid. In this case, I have them already under my orchid section. So it's one last thing I had to do this morning. And oh, and the time of day that I like to do this. So I like to fertilize and I like to apply all of my insecticides. I'm hitting this one because this is the one that's like the most affected. Um, so I like to apply all of my fungicides and my insecticides early in the morning. So it's not even 8 a.m. yet. So this is why, um, you know, I wanted to mention that because I don't like to apply anything when the sun is out so you don't burn any leaves either early in the morning or when the sun is starting to, um, is not as strong. So maybe like around, oh, and then I have a flower, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hit this one. Um, so anytime, probably like around 4 p.m. is when I do it in the afternoon. Yesterday I was really tired when I got home from work, so I didn't come out here. Um, and then I had some candle orders to do. Ah, ah, I don't want my golden digger to get hit. So I gotta avoid that. Um, so I had, I had some candle orders to do, so I couldn't get out here, um, yesterday. This is why I'm doing it today. And it's actually good because it's not cold at all. It said it was going to rain, but hopefully it doesn't. I mean, it was like 30%. So hopefully the rain stays away long enough for this stuff to be absorbed. And, um, yeah, and that's it. Look at, let's see where I'm at right now with my... So look at all that I've sprayed already. I have two gallons left. And I'm gonna do it off camera because I don't wanna bore you guys to death while you watch me apply the pesticide. Um, so yeah, you guys, this is today's video. Um, this is a video that I wanna make about once a week to motivate you guys and to get me out here to do it. Um, either if it's uh, applying a fungicide, applying pesticide, fertilizing, once a week, you guys are going to get one of these fantastic videos that are so fun to watch, I'm sure, of me just applying um, the stuff on my orchids. So yeah, that's a cue that whew, I got to end it right here because the, my neighbors are mowing the lawn and my dogs are going to start going crazy over there and I don't want to, even though I know it's pet safe, I don't want to... Um, I don't want them to be around when I when I apply any of this stuff. So uh, this is it for today's video. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think. Um, I will not. Okay, so before I go, I I, I thought I was gonna go to the uh, for Lauderdale show, um, and I did get a call from Ritters that they don't have any Rosé Sunset Fs, um, just like their mother plant that they're gonna be dividing and stuff, so they can't sell it to me, uh, which is fine. I'm, I'm perfectly fine with that. Um, hopefully I will find it um, soon. But yeah, Rosie Sunset F is on my, my list. I need it as soon as possible. So if you guys um, 
find it somewhere, just send me a quick uh, DM on Instagram or a message here on Facebook. And that's it, you guys. Wishing you a fantastic Thursday. Uh, hopefully this weekend we'll have some fun videos to bring you. So thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day and I will see you soon in my next video. Bye.